Alrighty, the third and final way to determine the pH of different solutions is through something called a titration. And a titration is where you take a known concentration of either an acid or a base and you use an indicator, most likely going to be our phenolphthalein, in order to get to an equivalence point. And that equivalence point is going to tell you what the unknown concentration is of what you are trying to analyze. Okay, so this is where we end up having a burette stand um, with varying amounts of acids and bases. Okay, the burette is going to be our graduated uh, test tube which is going to measure the exact amount to you know the tenth of a milliliter so it's very very easy it has a little valve here um, officially called a stopcock get your giggles out now all right and we are going to run this titration until we get to that palest pink possible we talked about with phenolphthalein in the previous chapter or in the previous video all right, so a couple of key things to go over before we explain how this titration works. And that is going to be that the titration is that process of taking a known concentration of either an acid or base, and it'll work for both, and using that in order to figure out the unknown version, okay, the unknown substance. Okay, and we get to this equivalent point which is shown through an indicator. The indicator tells you when to stop, okay, to when to stop adding acid to base or base to acid, and this is where you get to drop the base, and you get to um, basically get to a point where the moles of your acid are going to equal the moles of your base. All right, so this is what a titration curve looks like. A titration curve is going to have um, the pH as your y-axis, and it's going to have the amount of your titrant on the bottom. All right, so if we are starting with an acid here, and we are going to start with this very, very low pH, we are literally dropping the base. Okay, so you are dropping the base in order to figure out exactly how much you need to get to an equivalence point. Okay, so when you start adding in your, your base, it's going to slowly raise the pH. Slowly, slowly, slowly raise the pH. And even after you have added like 20 milliliters, okay, the pH really has only gone up like maybe one measurement okay one increment but all of a sudden when you get here the difference between 20.1 milliliters and 20.2 milliliters jumps from a pH of 3 up to a pH of 11. Yeah that's a lot and if you remember our lovely phenolphthalein our phenolphthalein changed at 8.2 to 10. 10 right here okay so if you are at that palest pink possible you are as close to that equivalence point right there that palest pink possible is your end point which is super close to your equivalence point all right and that's why we use phenolphthalein to show us when we are at a nice range remember back to this slide right here all right that 8.2 there's really nothing at a ph of 7 that is a definitive um answer for what the ph is going to be because my yellow could be your orangey yellow and your orangey yellow could be my orange something like that so that's why we use our phenolphthalein indicator down here um, because the closest that we get to seven is that palest pink possible right here okay so that being said all right this again is our ph graph you are adding your acid I'm sorry, you're adding your base to your acid and it jumps up ever so slightly with the smallest amount. And then what you'll see down here at the bottom, once this goes away, is your volume of 
base that is added is going to um, change the pH significantly with like a half a drop. And this is such a fun lab to watch you guys do because there really is an art of adding phenolphthalein. Um, so when you start, you add and you drop that base in here. Okay, it's funny because unfortunately some of you forget to put the indicator of phenolphthalein in there. So it's constantly going to be clear. You need to put the indicator in. And when you add a little bit of your base, it might change pink right there. But when you swirl, 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 it's going to disappear. And there's nothing like seeing it firsthand. And we have some videos to show you of that as well. And then once you get to that palest pink possible, you are at your end point and this is where you stop. Okay. If you go even a half a milliliter too far, okay, it's going to be super pink and it's going to be super, super, um, it's going to be super, uh, it's going to be too far. So you're going to have to back titrate it and you're going to actually have to add uh, more of your uh, acid in order to get it to get to that equivalence point. So don't fear if you go too far, you can go back by adding more acid for the too much base that you have. But this is that nice, sweet, palest pink possible that you want to get. All right. So a uh, titration equation that we're going to use is going to be very similar to what we saw with dilutions and that is going to be MAVA equals MBVB where MA is the molarity of your acid um, times the volume of your acid and the molarity of your base times the volume of your base and what you'll see just like we saw with our molarity by dilutions is um, is that molarity is your moles per liter and when you multiply it by your volume your liters are going to cancel out so your moles of acid are going to equal your moles of base that means that's your equivalence point and right now we're only going to work with one to one mole ratios between our acids and bases when you get to ap chem that's where you're going to have um, varying amounts of acids and bases and weak acids strong bases vice versa um, they'll explain the ka and the kb values as well um, once you get there one thing that we do briefly touch upon here is this concept of normality and this is where we um, take into account that there could be more than one acid or base equivalent this is very similar to the dissociation factors that we saw in the previous chapter but here we're only talking about h pluses or oh minuses okay so like h2so4 our sulfuric acid has two equivalents technically the first one is the most acidic one um, but once it donates one on hydrogen there is um, our bisulfate ion and it also has a hydrogen that could be acidic this is a weak acid so it wouldn't dissociate completely so again um, in AP you'll talk about your Ka values and stuff like that but when you were talking about base equivalents like aluminum hydroxide this is going to break up into Al3 plus and into three hydroxide ions it has a dissociation factor of four but it has um, only three base equivalents in there because it has your three hydroxide ions and be really really careful Okay, when you see your acetic acid, your HC2H, HC2H3O2, okay, there are hydrogens here, but this is the only acidic hydrogen. This only has one acid equivalent, okay, and this is actually a weak acid and has um, a very low dissociation factor as well. All right, so if you are trying to figure out what the molarity of a 0.09 normal solution of calcium hydroxide is going to be, you have to realize that there are two equivalents of your K, uh, CaOH um, in there. So you are going to have to divide it by two in order to get what your molarity of your substance is going to be. Okay, so that's that little side note. So let's do um, a titration equation, all right? Um, sometimes we end up uh, using this um, elongated normality equation, but we're basically going to, <laughs> get it, basically, going to use the molarity 
um, equation. So it says, what is the concentration of HNO3 uh, solution if 23.5 milliliters of a 0.35 molar KOH solution is titrated to an end point with 15 mils of acid? So we have MAVA equals MBVB. All right, HNO3 is going to be our acid. Okay, we are looking for MA. We don't know what that is. What is the concentration? We know that we have 15 milliliters of acid. And our base is going to be KOH. This is the molarity of our base, and this is the volume of our base. So, like Glade said, plug it in, plug it in. All right, MA, our VA is 15 milliliters. MB is 0 0.350 molar, and our volume of our base is 23.5 milliliters. As long as this is in milliliters and this is in milliliters, you don't have to worry about the milliliter um, and moles per liter and this stuff canceling out. All right, just like I went over before, it's okay if they're both in milliliters, but make sure that the volumes are the same. If this one would be in liters and this one would be in milliliters, you would have to change one of them or else it's not going to mathematically work out. So how do I solve? I want MA by itself, so I divide by 15 milliliters on both sides. Okay, and my milliliters and milliliters will cancel out. In my calculator, I am going to put Okay, 0 0.350 times 23.5 divided by 15 and hit enter. And my molarity of my acid is going to be 0.55 molar. Okay, so if you think about that, that's going to be 0.55 molar here. Take a look if this makes sense to us. All right, so 0.55 molar is going to be a more concentrated solution than a 0.35 molar base. So I'm going to need less of my concentrated acid to titrate to an equivalence point of my uh, less concentrated or more dilute base. Okay, so what you will see here on our next slide is this all worked out for you, where you also get that MAVA, MBVB, and we show that um, you are going to need less of your concentrated acid to get to that equivalence point. Because what we are doing is we want our moles of our acid to equal the moles of our base at the equivalence point. And that, my friends, is how we titrate. Booyah! Hope you enjoyed it. Please watch the videos and make sure that you um, ask questions if you have any. Thanks. Bye-bye.